Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at catalysis. Now catalysis is obviously an area of chemistry that uh, involves the use of catalysts and uh, in this video I'm just going to show you uh, how a catalyst can affect an a energy profile, so an energy of reaction and obviously the rate of reaction as well and just go through a few different types of catalysts. So best place to start is obviously what a catalyst is. Now a definition is crucial from um, most examples, you really do need to know what a catalyst is. And a catalyst is something that will increase the rate of reaction uh, by producing an alternative pathway uh, or reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. Now it's really important that you know um, about the uh, activation energy part as well, uh, because that's primarily how a catalyst works. So we're going to look at one of the energy profiles here to uh, show you what a difference a catalyst can make. So we've got a reaction here, and um, now this reaction, as you can see, is a exothermic reaction, and um, the products are lower in energy than our reactants. Uh, and if I draw an arrow down there, uh, you can see that this is actually a negative entropy change, so we know this is exothermic. Now, if we add a catalyst to this, um, a catalyst will actually lower the activation energy by providing the reaction with an alternative um, reaction pathway. So you can see here that this is the energy profile here, and this bit here is called the activation energy, which is this bit here. So this is the amount of energy, or the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to occur. So I'm going to put that there as Ea. Now, with a catalyst, if we add a catalyst to this reaction, we actually lower the activation energy. So I'm going to draw this in a blue line instead. So you can see that an, an, a catalyst will follow this pathway instead. Now you can see that the amount of energy, the activation energy between there and there is actually reduced. It's smaller. And that's effectively what a catalyst does. It's provided an alternative pathway for the reaction to proceed by. Uh, and it's done that actually by lowering the activation energy. So you don't need as much energy to actually um, allow this reaction to happen, which industrially is useful. Uh, because it means you don't need to spend as much money uh, and environmentally it's useful as well because um, you're not burning as much fossil fuels to heat the reaction to get it to work. Now, in terms of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, um, now if you're not sure what the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is, you just click on the link below uh, and you can find out more about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. But I assume you know what it is. And this shows you the average energy uh, or the energy, sorry, um, of particles in a reaction. Uh, and the, the last bit here tells us um, the energy um, that the particles have that allow them to collide and actually react. So this is above the, uh, the activation energy. Now, on a maximal Boltzmann curve, adding a catalyst will actually shift the activation energy um, to a lower energy level. So imagine this was energy. Um, so the energy on the, on the um, uh, x-axis at the bottom here, this is higher energy. So you can see that by adding a catalyst, so I'll put cat on there, so this is the activation energy with a catalyst in, you can see that actually um, uh, we have more, uh, more molecules now with energy greater than the activation energy after we've added our catalyst. So therefore, our rate of reaction um, should increase. Um, now, I've got to say that actually um, it is important to note that actually a catalyst will speed up the rate of reaction, but it doesn't produce more product. So in terms of equilibrium, um, the equilibrium um, is just established quicker, uh, but it doesn't actually produce any more product. It just means your product is produced quicker, but you don't make any more. So that is really important that you should know that. Um, another thing that's important as well is actually a catalyst is a, um, is a chemical that's actually never used up. And if it does react in the reaction, um, then it's always regenerated at the end. And this is good because it means you don't need to use a large amount of catalyst. Just a small amount in the reaction is enough to actually uh, speed up the rate of reaction and hence um, save money um, because you're not using up a lot of time to actually uh, make your product. Um, now, there's two types of catalysts. We have what we call a homogeneous catalyst and a heterogeneous catalyst. Now, homogeneous catalysts, uh, the word homo means same. So we're looking at a catalyst that's in the same phase of, as the reactants. So an example could be when you esterify, uh, when you undergo esterifications, when you take a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, when you react them together, you'll form an ester and water. Now the catalyst you use there is sulfuric acid. 
Now, sulfuric acid is in the same state as your carboxylic acid and your ester, so therefore um, we would describe that as a homogeneous catalyst. Um, now, these are really effective because uh, as a solution, they can get into the reaction really, really well. Um, the problem is, is trying to separate them out at the end if you ever want to do that. It's a little bit more difficult. Um, the other type of catalyst is a heterogeneous catalyst, and a heterogeneous catalyst is um, basically a catalyst that's going in a different phase. So, um, for example, you might have um, a solution or two solutions that you mix together, and you put a solid catalyst in there. Um, so, um, or it could be a gas as well. So, for example, the Haber process is the manufacture of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen, uh, and you'd use an iron catalyst there. Now, because you're obviously nitrogen and hydrogen is in the gas phase, your iron is a solid, so iron is classed as a heterogeneous catalyst. Now, the advantages of this is that um, heterogeneous catalysts can easily be separated at the end of the reaction, um, but the disadvantage is actually um, solid catalysts such as um, iron um, are normally mounted on a, um, on a mesh to increase the surface area, so the larger surface area means that the catalyst reacts uh, or can interact with the uh, gases um, a lot more readily. Um, and effectively what happens is your molecules will absorb onto the surface, that's absorbed with a D, which means it will just uh, it will stick itself onto the surface of the catalyst and it will remain there until the reaction happens uh, and then it will desorb off the surface uh, and then carry on um, um, to form the product. So, but the problem is, is that sometimes you can get impurities that block up the um, the mesh and particular things like zeolites where they've got a very fine honeycomb structure, some of them pores can get blocked uh, and if they're blocked it means your catalyst isn't as effective and we describe that as poisoning, so catalyst poisoning um, and that can be a disadvantage of certain catalysts such as zeolites uh, and heterogeneous catalysts as well. And um, Just a final thing as well uh, is that um, they're also used in cars as a catalytic converter to so use expensive metals like platinum um, and um, gold and other reagents as well, but in a car exhaust you'll have mainly platinum. Uh, platinum is a very expensive um, metal, very effective at converting uh, your likes of carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides to nitrogen and carbon dioxide, um, but there is a video that looks into that on the Arcane's playlist uh, on the combustion of fuels, so uh, if you want to have a look at the reactions regarding that, uh, then just click on the link below uh, and you can have a look at that there as well. Now, um, that's about it really, um, just remember that definition, it's so, so important, uh, and you've got to be able to interpret um, these two graphs here in relation to catalysts as well. Um, but catalysts come through uh, in all, all areas of chemistry, through A2 and AS chemistry as well, so um, but this is just showing you um, effectively how they work. Hope that helps, that's it, bye.